So now in this video we're going to take a quick look at how I wired up these uh, six LEDs to have a Knight Rider like effect right there. It's a chaser so uh, every time we get a high uh, input, a high output from the 555 timer, the LED changes. But it works its way down and then it works its way up every time it gets a high pulse. This capacitor here is just because if I uh, bump the power supply it will cut power briefly. This provides power during that brief period of time. So now we'll explain how uh, the LEDs work. Last video I showed uh, each one of these wires from the output to the diode protecting the uh, LEDs. I showed how I wired that up to make it uh, simple. So we're not going to go into detail on that. First thing though is we got the top LED that's wired up uh, you know, after the uh, diode there to output zero. So when we first apply power output uh, zero is high and uh, so that LED will light up. We don't need that diode behind it because uh, the other LEDs are diodes. They don't let current flow that way. Remember current's positive to negative. That's how they used to think current flowed. Um, but since all these other LEDs do need a diode in a series with them, a couple of them actually, they're going to lose about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts. And uh, so we just make that one lose the uh, same amount of voltage and the LEDs are the same brightness. I grabbed uh, brand new LEDs for uh, this series, all these uh, 4017 uh, videos right there. So they should all be the same brightness. They haven't been abused yet. So in any case, that one lights up. We get a high pulse to the clock pin and it sets output one high, the next output. So now we need the diode. So remember, uh, conventional current is positive and negative. That's how they used to think it flowed. And so it works its way uh, that way to ground. And that's why we need this diode because while output one is high, output nine is low. So that would be a direct connection to uh, the two power supplies. It would be a short circuit uh, through there. We'd probably fry the integrated circuit. I don't know how much uh, protection circuitry they have. So in any case, it prevents it from flowing uh, that way. It has to go through the LED to ground right there. Another high uh, input. So as soon as it goes high at the uh, clock, then it goes from output one to output two being high. That one lights up. Next one I'll put three, next one I'll put four, and then the next one I'll put five. So we got six LEDs. We're at uh, the number five output, but that's our sixth output because remember the first one was zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, and then five, uh, six total. That one lights up. So again, we don't need the diode to protect the LED. The 1K resistor is uh, doing that and uh, the current's not going to flow because the LEDs are diodes as well. Uh, back through them so we don't need this to make the circuit work at all but it drops the same voltage that those are dropping so the LED is the same brightness now we uh, work our way up so that's output 5 and uh, 6 outputs total now we go to the 7th output which is output 6 and uh, then 7 is above it so each high uh, clock pulse sets it to the next higher one till we get to 9 and then the process starts all over again. When you have output nine high and you give the clock a high uh, pulse, it jumps back to zero, starting the process all over again. So that's how the LEDs work. So now for our clock symbol, as I said, we have the 555 timer. It's wired in A stable mode. That's been covered a whole lot in my other videos and stuff. So we're just gonna kind of briefly uh, mention it. I have uh, one of these 4017s, the first one, did not work. I had uh, the output of the uh, 555 timer directly to the uh, clock pin. So I added a 10K resistor to help protect it. So we got the uh, output 10K resistor coming down here to a blank row and then a jumper coming to the uh, clock pin, uh, third pin down, pin number 14 of the 4017. So that's why I have that. I don't think you need it. Maybe it was just a bad integrated circuit to begin with, but I added it there just to uh, help uh, make sure that uh, it protected because I don't have very many of these 4017s. So in any case, for the timing, we have two 10K resistors for when the capacitor charges. That's when the output is high. And then uh, when the capacitor discharges, just through one 10K resistor, the output is low. So you can see it's pretty quick right here. And uh, every time the red LED uh, flashes, that's when we have a high output. So since we're using 5 volts, about 3.5 volts is coming out. A uh, red LED lights up. And also that's enough voltage for the clock. As you can see, the LEDs are moving. So um, 
we have uh, that 10 microfarad capacitor. So a larger value capacitor with these same resistors would take longer to charge and discharge. The timing would be slower. And uh, lower values, it would be even quicker. But I like the speed of these LEDs here. So I used those three values. And now we'll just take a quick look at the uh, 4017 pin layout uh, right here. So CD is a couple letters that are commonly in front of the 4017. Depends on manufacturer, but uh, CD is common for another of them. The uh, BE over here is the enhanced version, and that seems to be the most common uh, right now. 4017 BE. So they're enhanced from the base version, but these appear to be uh, pretty much universal if you buy the 4017 um, so you can pretty much plan if you buy them that uh, that's what you will receive So you can see we got all outputs on the left side except for the ground pin at the bottom And then the positive supply pin pin 16 up there. So um, they're on the schematic. We have pin 15 That is the reset pin. So um, we hold that low. It doesn't do anything while it's low It's active high. It's waiting for a high you could add a switch to the positive supply and uh, if it gets a high input then it sets output zero high as long as the uh, reset pin is high output zero is high the clock can keep going doesn't matter it'll just stay uh, zero until you uh, drop it back low again and then it will continue uh, working as normal pin 13 is uh, a bit different it is the enable pin so it is uh, keeping the integrated circuit enabled while it has a low uh, input there. That means it's going to work as normal. If we uh, had a switch to the positive supply and uh, we give it a high input, whatever output is high, so let's say output 2 is high when that happens, that is where it's going to stay. So it's going to ignore the clock, but it's going to stay at whatever output it was. So we could hold it there. And then you drop back to low, it uh, continues uh, where it left off 